Hello and welcome to the fourth round of the UCI Women's Road World Cup here in the province of Liège. A beautiful day and a beautiful setting for the Flesh Malon. Here's the Astana team on the team presentation with, of course, in their midst, Elena Amalusik, who's ridden well in a couple of rounds of this series so far. Here's Linda Willemsen, a tremendous time trialist from the Wiggle Honda team, and Anna Sanchez getting ready for racing. The Lotto Bellasol team, they'll be here working for Emma Pooley, who's had a bit of a break after finishing her PhD, and we hadn't seen a race this year until just last week. Let's hear from the winner in 2010. The race isn't just about the Muir. It's a, it's a long race, and uh, it's a war of attrition on this course. So um, the Muir de Huy is just steep. That's OK. <laughs> it's getting to the Muir that's the difficult bit. <laughs> Well, I think Emma will be looking forward to the Mieux de Hoy much more than anyone else. Here's Ellen van Dijk, the winner of the Tour of Flanders last time. Um, yeah, the course is, is super tough. Um, it's more climbing than in Flanders for sure. So, um, yeah, I hope also to be up there again. But, yeah, I don't know how it will be. But for sure we have a strong team. So uh, I hope we can, uh, yeah, we can play, uh, play a good race here. Elisa Longo Borghini, she was second here last year to Marianne Voss, and this year she teams up with okay. Ashley Moorman, who was actually third was so last nice year. It'll be interesting to see who plays team leader. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting race. Um, I think this year there's um, the strength of the women's peloton is, is somewhat spread over uh, many teams. So, um, yeah, I think it could be quite an aggressive and active race, unlike last year where it was sort of more or less controlled to the last meet. So I think we're going to have to be um, attentive today and, and ready to to race um, hard and we can't all just wait for the meet so it'll be exciting and here's Mariana Voss it's her first road race of the season and she said many times over and over she's here to work for her teammates she's won this race five times so one of the clear favorites well, well I feel good I've had a good preparation and training but as it's my first race uh, I don't know um, yeah, what my level is yet and uh, we'll see today but well we have a strong team and uh, uh, I hope I can can do a good job for for the team and for the other girls. Well, there is the Rabobank uh, live team with Mariana Voss, and uh, they also, of course, have got two of the leaders' jerseys in their midst as well. They are such a strong team. On the start line, a very warm day as the riders get ready. Ashley Moorman, we caught a glimpse of there. And many riders you will see have got little notes taped to the handlebars to just give an indication of where the key points of the race are. There's Lizzie Armistead, the World Cup leader. She's got a little bit of a head cold this morning and we'll see whether that causes uh, any problems as the race unfolds. Well, on the menu today, 127 kilometers of racing, 12 climbs along the way. It is all based on the Mieux de Hoy. There's a race through. You can see the different climbs that these riders face. We have got the mountains classification again for the World Cup. That will be faced on the Cote d'Ahin and on the two climbs of the Mieux de Hoy along the way. Two laps. It is, as Emma Pooley said, a very difficult parkour that the riders have to endure. And it all comes down to whether you get in the right position at the bottom of this fearsome climb to the finish. So the 24 teams, the 139 riders lined up behind the pace car there. And now the flag is dropped and we'll see what today's racing brings. Well, Rochelle, you've ridden this race before. It's a really tough one. There is no respite along the way for those legs at all, is there? That's absolutely true. The course is extremely hard. It's up and down all day and dead roads. So there's no place on this course where you can just relax and reserve and save energy. It's, uh, it's up and down all day and unless you... Mariana Voss, one of the fittest bike riders in the race. It's, uh, it's a very tough bike race. Well, in the past, we've seen this race have uh, snow and rain, but it is an absolutely magnificent day. There in the white jersey, uh, Lizzie Armistead, uh, who is dominating so far in this World Cup. At the back there, Joanna Rousel having a tough day. Yeah, unfortunately, Joanna woke up not feeling so well this morning, and that's uh, the luck of the day, I guess, and she'll be off to the doctors tomorrow to sort out what's going on there. Well, let's hope the Olympic champion feels better as we see the first big attack of the day. This is uh, Yulia Linic, who rides for the Biscaya Durango team, who's just opened up a little bit of a gap on the rest of the peloton. Yeah, she's 20 year years old and she's moved herself to Spain to be near the base of the team, Biscaya. She's a, a Russian rider. She's doing very well today um, to get out there. And that's what these bike riders do that a uh, little bit scared of the murder hoy at the finish and being there with the top climbers. So she's out there making it a hard race. 
Well, some riders like to go away and uh, try and open up a little bit of an advantage, pull some riders along, try and get a gap, and then work together. 35 seconds now, uh, her advantage on the rest of the field. But there are so many favourites in here today who can uh, try and win the Flesh Vallon. It is one of those races that everybody wants to win. A stunning sight as this big peloton of riders work their way through these uh, narrow roads. In the field today, of course, Mariana Voss, we've mentioned, has already got five wins. Emma Pooley's won this race before. One rider we haven't talked about uh, so far is Evie Stevens, as we still see this rider on the attack. Evie Stevens was the winner ahead of Mariana Voss in 2012, uh, so we'll see whether she can actually do something on the final climb of the day. Well, she's an exciting rider to watch. When we think back to that time that she beat Mariana Voss up the Murder Hoy, it was an exciting race and nobody expected it from Evie Stevens and uh, she'll definitely be up there with the best today pushing it to the finish line. Well we saw her last night at the team presentation she was very excited and getting ready for racing. Onto the Cote de Burso this is a 7.6 percent gradient as you can see really tough on the legs and uh, as Emma Pooley said earlier it's a war of attrition the legs just get more and more tired constant climbs 12 climbs in total which really do sting. Now we're seeing the pace start to happen and Ilinich is about to be caught by the fast-moving riders at the front of this 139-strong peloton. Looks to me like it could be Lucinda Brandt, the first rider to catch her. Well, Rabobank certainly mean business today, and that says a lot, that move, because to put a Rabobank rider out and chase that break down so early means they want to close everything and keep the bike race together. Over the top of that climb, Elisa Longo-Borghini still looking strong. She's having a great season so far. Well, Mariana Voss is playing down her chances in this race. Uh, she said to me this morning that uh, she's had some great training in Girona last week, but she's certainly going to look after the rest of her team. Let's see whether that actually happens. Little split now, 22 seconds. Well, the winner, of course, in the Chitilia round of the World Cup was Emma Johansson of the Orica AIS team. And throughout the season, they have a regular round-the-table chat where they enable their fans to ask some different questions leading up to a race. Well, this time, they've let the cameras in. So let's find out from Orica AIS before Flesh Vallon. <laughs> All right, let's open this up with the usual prompt. Describe the race, the course, the atmosphere, how you feel about riding it. Oh, well, it's um, it's always awesome atmosphere in, in Hui. I think it's um, it's one together with with the Ronde van Flanderen. It's, it's absolutely the most beautiful race in, in Belgium during the season. And um, it's always a lot of public. We are racing on the same day as, as the men, which makes that we can take part of all the the big crowd that they have as well. So. I think it's a roller coaster from start till finish line. Before you know, you already hit the first climb and then yeah, downhill, it's fast, it's narrow climbs, it's heavy, but it's yeah, it's nice with all the spectators and uh, it's one of the classic uh, races, so that makes it special. How do you pronounce the final climb? Medui. Valley? Mordui. Oh, <laughs> 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 All right, um, and what about the Euros? What, how do you think it goes I'm in? Not Euros. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, she's an Aussie. She's an Aussie these days. Okay. Good night, mate. Night. Muur de Hoy. Muur van Hoy. Oh gosh. Warm. All right. Well, there's a few variations there. Um, what do you say? Murder yeah, oi! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with Carly in this one. <laughs> Clueless! Um, anyway, how hard is the murder hoi? Is it one of the hardest climbs you would ride in the season? Obviously, it depends on how it gets ridden. If you do it all in from the bottom all the way to the top, it can be the hardest one. But And I think it's awesome. awesome because it's the last one. You know, yeah, the finish is on the top. Or, so, and it's a World Cup that makes it more heavy. If you have it halfway to race and uh, with a flat finish, it's totally different. The crowds cheering also though kind of gives you a bit of motivation and helps. But it doesn't I think, make it like, easier. Yeah, no. Well, nah. it clearly <laughs> doesn't. I rode with a compact chain ring in the 28 last year. <laughs> it's the same with the sausage and the potatoes uh, smell and cigarettes. Yeah. Doesn't make it easier. But the atmosphere does kind of. Yeah. It's good to have people cheering you up at least. What's the team plan for the race? What needs to happen for the team to walk away with a win? Do you reckon, Shara? Um, 
Well, we all need to work really well as a team and I guess we'll discuss our team tactics in a minute in team meeting and it'll all be hush hush and we <laughs> I won't give anything away. But yeah, for us definitely to work as a as a group and it makes us stronger so yeah, and to have one objective and that's And the willing to dance. Every time dancing has come up as a reward, we've won the race. Yeah. All right, let's close this portion of the round table with the usual final questions. How much coffee do you allow yourselves to drink before a race? If it's a good coffee, you can have what, one or more. Six. But, yeah, it has to be a really tiny coffee because, yeah, this in this area, I didn't find yet. Sorry. <laughs> what about the coffee machine? Well, yeah, don't tell everyone or we have the row outside the camper van, sorry. <laughs> From Alan on Facebook, what's a common pre-race meal? Ooh, brekkie. We love brekkie. Yeah, everything. I could do brekkie yeah. all day long. Yeah. <laughs> what's your best memory from flesh and what's your worst memory, Luce? Um, I think my worst memory is that I died every year a couple of times <laughs> and the good point is I'm still alive and yeah. I'm going to do it tomorrow again so yeah you're back for more yeah <laughs> I'm ready we're approaching the first ascent of the fearsome Mudahoy and we have an elite group of riders here at the front. 45 seconds, the advantage, and picking out some of the riders in here. Emma Pooley safely in the group, so is Pauline Ferren Prevost and the World Cup leader Lizzie Armistead. All the favourites are in there and some people say that these races having such a scary climb at the finish, the murder hoy, that the riders don't race aggressively. But we see how hard the race is when it splits up and there's only a select few of the race favourites at the front. Mariana Voss having a good conversation there with Anna van der Breggen as they uh, talk tactics. Let's see what they decide to do at the end of this race. So Lucinda Brand on the front yet again, the Dutch champion, doing a tremendous amount of work for the rest of her team. She certainly is. They've got the numbers here, Rubber Bank, so it's very hard to know who they're riding for. And I bet a lot of riders in the peloton are watching the body language between the Rubber Bank riders to try and work out who is the lead rider today out on the road. Well, they can play some mind games, can they, as we head back in towards uh, Hoy for this first climb. Uh, Rochelle, you know, you've ridden with Mariana Voss so many times as we approach the lower slopes, 9%. Does she completely change the way a race is run, or do you think she's having less impact on that now? Well, I think as women's cycling is developing, each team in the peloton is becoming stronger. So there's a lot more team tactics that come into play. We see here Lizzie Armitstead. She's setting the pace on the front the first time up the murder hoy. There's a big question mark over whether Lizzie Armitstead can climb good enough to be in the top three here today. She looked tremendously focused on the uh, start line today. Lizzie, of course, a vegetarian. She's got to balance out, being able to take in the right carbohydrates and proteins. Uh, but this year, she's got absolutely everything perfect. And so far in this race, she is looking supreme yet again. She has not been outside the top two in these World Cup rounds as we head now towards 500 metres to go. It's very, very steep. Well, 500 metres to go on the Murder Hoy feels like 10 kilometres uphill. It's a really tough climb, so even the last 200 metres, you think you're nearly there, but you're not. You can see the riders are really struggling here. They've all probably got 29 cassettes on the back, um, compact cranks. The crowd's really been waiting now to see these riders coming through. It's a great atmosphere on the Murder Hoy. Across each side, there are different uh, pubs and bars open, and of course, the fruits are for sale. There's Emma Pooley in the red jersey there on the left hand side. Looking good, she's got such a great climbing style. We see these are the best of the climbers here. They're racing for the first queen of the mountains of the day. And we have Anna van der Bregen in the climbers jersey. She's in there in about fifth position, so it'll be interesting to see if she gets points in this queen of the mountains. Well, further on back, uh, Mariana Voss is not looking as good as she normally does. Sometimes when you return to racing after a little bit of a break and just training, it can be really difficult on the body. Well, she said many times that she's not peaked for this race. It is her first road race of the season, so she's here purely to work for her teammates. And we might see her do a little bit of attacking and try to set things up for one of those other rubber bank riders. Ashley Moorman took the points at the top of the climb there, so one more lap to go. And uh, now we're seeing the Bowles Dolmans team. They're the squad who are predominantly in the orange coloured kit with the black. The team of Lizzie Armistead all massing now at the front of this peloton. 
Elizabeth de Vocht has gone to the front for the Lotto Bellasol team. Obviously, they're here working for Emma Pooley, and she looked extremely comfortable on that climb. So it's good to see that she's got some teammates there to control things for her. Wearing number 41 on the back of the group, Elena Amalusic, who was third in Chitilio. And still the pacemaking continues. Many teams represented now at the front. Well, LA Cipollini there in the yellow, they've got uh, predominantly a sprinter's team, so it'll be interesting to see if they get to the finish with uh, a couple of riders in position. And the chasing group is now 25 seconds behind, so there is the chance that this race could come back together and we'll see many riders again in this front peloton. But the tempo is still relatively high. They've been racing hard from the start. Here's a glimpse then of the chasing group led by the Olympic gold medalist Danny King. Well, it certainly is close. If they're going to get back, they need to do it now, and they need to get a few of the different teams. But the thing is that they've all got uh, represented riders up the front there, so there's not that much interest for people to get on the front and bring this back. So Danny King there, Laura Trott, the double Olympic champion, on the other side there from Wiggle Honda as we wait to see whether they can come back to the front of this race. A little bit of panic between these riders. They know they have to do it soon. And uh, now we see an attack of Audrey Cordon. Well, that's a beautiful attack. She's obviously working for her very strong teammates, Ashley Moorman and Elisa Longo Borghini. They've got the numbers there, and she's out there making it hard and softening up the peloton for her leaders. This is the ninth climb of the day, the Cote de Buisseau, and it's Audrey Corden then of the high-tech team who is opening up a little bit of an advantage now on the rest of the peloton. Let's see whether anyone can come across to her. It could be a strong attack if they possibly can. Right, let's see what's going to happen here. Many riders stretched out, long line, as uh, everyone tries to stay in the wheels, a critical point. Jesse Dams was suffering at the back there for the Bowles Dolmans team. This attack is looking good. She's doing a great job for her teammates. I mean, this was her job here today, and she's, she's executing it perfectly to set up those two riders coming into the murder hoy. She looks around and uh, yet again, this race is going to come back together and it's Lizzie Armistead who is going to be one of the first riders who is going to catch and uh, immediately though we see the world champion Mariana Voss tracked by Lizzie Armistead. Well, this is where she's, she's digging deep now. She's having a real go. She went out after Audrey Cordon and she's just kept going and oh, there's a break forced away here. Looks like this break has come back together. 10 kilometers to go, and there are a few riders making their way off the front of this group. And Armistead and Voss and Evie Stevens and Ashley Moorman are all looking round at each other, which is a big surprise. And immediately Eleanor, Eleonora Van Dyke goes to the front. But it, this is the rider who's doing the damage, and it's the rider from Wiggle Honda. Linda Willemsen, the New Zealander, well, actually, the Danish born Kiwi, is on the attack now. Well, that's a great move by Linda, and the, the Peloton certainly won't want to let that one go she's extremely strong at time trialing obviously five times on the podium in the world championships in the time trial so she's a, a dangerous rider to let go well she's got a magnificent palmara she won the Giro del Trentino in 2012 and one of her real talents is this she can descend like a stone going through the corners right on the limit Absolutely. When she made a move like this at the Route de France in the last stage last year, her director, Simon Cope, said that he couldn't keep up with her in the car and he was really nervous. He said her tactical skills are fabulous on the descents. 50 seconds already. That's amazing. To put that much time into the peloton, this is a dangerous move. Well, there's a bit of panic now in this peloton as they realise they've let one of the best time trialists in the world go it alone. That is something you definitely do not want to do. And it's uh, yet again the faithful riders of Lizzie Armistead with Ellen van Dyke, the winner of the Tour of Flanders, now trying to drill this one back and catch Linda Willemsen, Mariana Voss rehydrating, keeping things together before the run into the finish. Five kilometres to go. It's nice to see Ellen van Dyke's on the front working for Lizzie Armistead again. Obviously, she won the last World Cup in Flanders. And she was really good here last year, actually, but she's, she's wiped any chance of her having a result here, and she's just sacrificed and gone on the front for Lizzie Armistead. Everything getting set up then for the run into the final climb of the Mur de Hoy. It's one kilometre of strength sapping, leg hurting pain, and Willemsen still has 35 seconds. Don't look round, Linda. You don't want to know what's going on behind. Just keep concentrating on this climb as we see Mulman now come to the front of the chase. Well, we see Linda there getting settled into a rhythm. 35 seconds at the bottom is a pretty handy lead, so the bunch is really starting to race now.
Yeah, you can see the tempo increasing all the time. On the front was Shara Gillow. Moving up on the left-hand side, wearing number three is the French rider, Pauline ferrand Prevot. He's a very, very good climber. More riders are arriving, including Claudia Hausler. It's all going to be a showdown. Can Willemsen keep off the might of this peloton? And we can see a move happening here on the right of your screen. I think that's Tiffany Cromwell. Yeah, she attacks with Evie Stevens on the wheel. Yep, she's giving everything she's got here to set it up for Evie Stevens and to make the peloton react. She's really getting into a rhythm here and giving she's giving her a maximum. Yeah, real full throttle here from Tiff Cromwell. Well, she said before the start she was looking forward to this. She was ready for it. She was confident. And now she's the rider who is trying to close the gap on Linda Willemsen from Wiggle Honda. And there is Willemsen, who's got a nice tempo going, a little bit of strapping on the knee. This must be hurting. She's not far from the top, you know. She certainly keeps a straight face when she's in pain because I bet she's in a lot of pain after that big effort. She went out to 50 seconds pretty quickly in the last five kilometres. Well, Tiffany Cromwell, the shoulders are rocking all over the place. She lives down in Monaco as she goes uh, to, back to the peloton now, I think. The advance party is catching uh, up to Linda Willemsen, but she still has a gap onto this turn, which is over 20% and is really going to hurt. Oh, she's so close to the finish, but it looks like she's doing it tough. She's got to give everything now. The gap's coming down pretty quickly. I think she's in the last 300 metres already. Well, only 300 metres left to go. And Mariana Voss, you can see, is all over her bike. When do you ever see the world champion hurting like this? And suddenly the uh, peloton are about to catch. Linda Willemsen, she looks around and almost comes to a standstill. And it's Evelyn Stevens, Lizzie Armistead and Pauline ferrand Provo going shoulder to shoulder up the climb. Well, the secret of this climb is not to hit out too early. And we see Pauline ferrand Provo on the wheel of Lizzie Armistead there. Uh, Ashley Moorman coming back, Elisa Longo Borghini, and that's uh, called it a day for Linda Willemsen. She's, uh, she's been caught and I think it's difficult to pick up the pace here. Mariana Voss sprinting round Linda Willemsen, wearing number one. She's unable to go with the tempo. Well, she was right in working for her teammates, wasn't she? Maybe not right on the top form that we would expect to see Voss in later on in the season. The shoulders are all over the place. It's certainly good to see her working so hard, um, not off the front for once. Um, she's got a teammate up there. She's probably trying to see how her teammates are doing. Here we go then, we're inside the final 150 metres. The World Cup leader, Lizzie Armistead, hits the front. Here comes Pauline ferrand Provo. This young rider is the French individual time trial champion. We haven't seen her climb like this uh, for a while. Here she goes now, round Lizzie Armistead. Evie Stevens dropping away. It's going to be a drag race all the way to the line. 75 metres to go, 50 metres to go. And the teammate of Mariana Voss, Pauline ferrand Provo is going to win the biggest race of her career so far. She sits up, she takes the 17th flesh for long. What a stunning win by the rider from France, from Rabobank Live. That was just certainly a perfect ride. Obviously, she's got some good advice there from Marianne Voss on how to ride the Murder Hoy, and she stayed patient, and I think patient wins you the bike race here today. Oh, that was a stunning win. <laughs> Bah, j'étais bien toute la course, c'est vrai. Au premier passage euh, dans le mur, j'étais, euh, je m'en sentais très bien. Donc euh, Marianne a dit bon, bah, on va travailler pour toi, tu fais rien. Et puis euh, dans la dernière ascension, tu essaieras d'aller bah, faire un podium. Four rounds down, five rounds left to run. Pauline ferrand Provo wins the Flesh Vallon ahead of Lizzie Armistead and Elisa Longa Borghini there in third place. Previous winner Evie Stevens in fourth today. Down in 11th, unusually Emma Johansson, not a good day for her as she tries to win this UCI World Cup. Well, here's the top 10 now. Lizzie Armistead extends her advantage 420 points and with that performance today, Pauline ferrand Provo moves into sixth. Well, the 22-year-old French rider Pauline ferrand Provo makes her way onto the podium to be given the biggest win of her career. There she is, flanked by the British champion on the left-hand side, Lizzie Armistead. And on the right, for the first time in a World Cup this season, Elisa Longaborghini.
Well, that was certainly an impressive ride by Lizzie Armistead. She was second here today, but she has a very handy lead on the World Cup ranking. She certainly does. Well, there's still a little bit of an uncertainty as to whether Lizzie Armistead will ride the next round. There's our podium. We're heading now to China for the tour of Chongming Island. Don't forget to join us on Twitter at UCI Women's Cycling. Another stunning round of the UCI Women's World Cup from Rochelle Gilmore and myself, Anthony McCrossan. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.